the other aspects of your life yeah. <clears throat> just kind of go away in the, in the course of touring. Plus, you you know, it's it's pretty impossible for us to, to ride on the road as far as finding time and situations that are comfortable. So when we go home, we usually, you know, take a, a week or two off and then we go right to writing because we don't have much opportunity to do that. And we really, you know, you have the urge and you have the need mm -hmm. to mix it up between, you know, playing live all the time and writing new songs. So since you're playing all the time, that's the majority of your time right now, it's just yeah. playing, you really find the, you know, you make the time to really start writing new songs and such. We were just talking before, though, about Josh Harmon and the Stone Age and their just relentless work ethic when it comes to making music because that is... It is work, you know, and when they're on the road or when they're, you know, like, like same with you, they write off the road, but when they're on the road, they're always writing as well. Why do you think it is good? it's okay with some bands they can do it and with, with you guys maybe you can't? Because you like a lot of bands as well that can't do it, you know? <clears throat> I think it might have to do with the fact that we just write as a, as a group yeah. and uh, everyone contributes. So we kind of need to be able to set up it's not like one person can just like write all the parts and then yeah. tell everybody else, okay, let's try this today. It's uh, we kind of have to. It's a democracy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Say that. <laughs> Which brings us to our first uh, question from the message board. Doll Part us uh, is just a massive, massive fan. You can tell because uh, she or he has just posted so many questions on this board. Uh, one of them is, you've been playing a new song in your set, "The Length of Love." Is this true? Yeah. So there is one new song you guys have got. Well, we have a few new songs, but um, we've been playing basically two new songs on our set. We played um, last night at Shepherd's Bush, and mm -hmm. we played two new songs, so uh, Length of Love is one of them. Mm. What's the song that seems to get the best reaction from the crowd? I guess it's going to have to be Obstacle 1 or PDA, isn't it, perhaps? I, I think everyone has their <coughs> favorites. I think we're one of those bands that, you know, mm. um, it's not the obvious, it's not the single that necessarily is what is the best song on the album and the yeah. song that gets most people. Everyone has their favorites for, for different reasons, which is, for me, the best kind of band to be in. I really like that. Yeah. You, know, that you hear it all the time, oh, that's my favorite, this is my favorite. But certainly when you start playing Obstacle 1 or, or PDA, uh, people start kind of really getting into it. Okay, now a lot of people were uh, concerned with influences. I know that it follows you around this whole Joy Division thing, and I think it's just because your singing style is a similar tone to what, to what Ian was singing. But someone <coughs> actually mentioned here, let me see if I can work out who it was, uh, there was a, a, a pulp reference in here, which I thought was interesting. I think it was Waymart saying I could pick up a little bit of pulp. Is that true? Um, you thought about that before? I like pulp. I don't think I'd put it up there as kind of a major influence on me yeah. musically. But, uh, Influences are such strange things, eh? they follow you around because the media, like people like us, are so desperate to try and find a connection to make it fit in a box or whatever, you know, but I, I'd imagine that when you're in a band, your influences generally don't, are the things that don't actually translate in your music, you know? Yeah, I think so. I think you probably wouldn't get very far as a band if you kind of were just literally mimicking a certain style, and like if you could really yeah. say, these are my influences, this is what I want to sound like, then it just... You're not really even an artist if yeah. that's your approach to it. So yeah, I mean, I think influences kind of get buried really deeply in the way that they come out. Couldn't be as obvious, I think, as sometimes yeah. people try and make it seem. There was a great question on here, and I, I, I'd spend five, a couple of minutes trying to work out who it was from, because there's so many, but apologies if I don't get your name. Uh, I was wanting to know if you guys would consider doing movie soundtracks, because obviously there's a cinematic aspect to what you guys yeah. make as well. No, we would really love to do that. I mean, we're really all huge film fans, and. Um, I love playing guitar and watching films and stuff like that. It's probably my favorite thing to do when I go home. So, yeah. no, I, I think we would really, we've already spoken about, the, you know, hopefully one day getting to do something like that. But yeah, we would love to do it. And I think there really is a very strong cinematic quality to our music. That question came from Waymart. Um, that's a, it's a, such a tough, it's a tough market to crack, though, you know, movie soundtracks. Because everybody who makes music, is, they want to get in there and they want to put, you know, their music to pictures. And it is like the ultimate marriage, isn't it? You know, are there certain directors that now's the time? Because, you know, we're well watched in the, fi the film community. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right to our website. Like if you're making a film. <laughs> there, who are your favorite directors? Who are the people you could imagine would go well with the music that Interpol make? Oh, man. Uh, if we can get rid of Battle of Menti, I think Lynch would be great. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> it's not likely, right? <laughs> 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 All right, good call. Uh, let's move on and come back. We'll talk to the lads in a minute.